this week on Just Relentless. After drawing a mule deer tag in his home zone, Kalen sets out in his hometown hills in hopes of connecting with a gorgeous mule deer buck. After the success we found in our first season, we thought we'd be able to carry that momentum into the following year. Little did we know, Mother Nature had other ideas and was going to give us a reality check in a big way. With the way things were in the world adding on to the challenge of hunting itself, this year made us dig down deep and see just what we are made of. got set up and got into one of the white tails he's out to do so that was pretty cool but checking out some mule deer and this little bachelor group we got here and one's actually really good looking typical and they're a nice familiar spot we hunted a lot last year so both Kaylin and I have a fair bit of history with this deer we named this deer jumpy for some reason this deer always had our number and in 2019, Kalen had the closest opportunity on this buck, where he just shot under him. After that missed opportunity, Kalen's goal for the 2021 season was to get a little redemption. It is October 6th. Opening day for muzzleloader season was the first. I've been working on shift lately so I've only had a week off at a time here and there. I haven't done any hunting for myself this year. I've just been busy filming and working. Luckily Caleb was able to get a good whitetail down in September and we tried for mule deer and we ended up having bad luck down south but you know that's hunting but uh, it's my turn to go now. We decided October would be my month. I got a target set out at 100 right now and the muzzleloader is with me so I'm gonna get it sighted in and be ready to go come morning.
Yeah, they're both side by side. The gun jumped me a little bit there. That's one for the bloopers reel. Dead animal regardless. Okay. I think we'll spend the rest of the night doing some scouting. It's not really, not real ideal weather. We got a lot of smoke here. Must be a fire up north somewhere, but drive around, see what we can see. Just kill some time and then go over to Caleb's and make a game plan for the morning. I'm really excited now. After getting eyes on the group of bucks that had ran over the hill when we first arrived, we quickly realized that none of these deer were really worth putting a draw tag on. Even though we had not found a buck worth going after, the morning sure was productive. Deer were running all over the place, and the morning could not have been more beautiful. Buck we seen last night. We 
put him to bed. He's by himself right now, which is awesome. It's hard to tell if he's for sure a shooter because he's got some flaws to him, but no deer is perfect. But anyway, he's in such a perfect spot and the morning's already over, so we're gonna move in on him and see what happens. It's a beautiful day to do some hunting anyway. Well, I think he's gone to sleep, so Matthew and I are gonna gear up. I'll get the muzzle loader loaded. And we'll slowly creep our way there. Probably a quarter mile or half a mile. No, that's dumb. I don't know how far it is. He's a hard one to judge, but got nothing else to do and might as well get some good footage out of it, but I'll make the final call when I'm in there. He is nice though. This year has been so tough trying to find a mature deer. I don't know what is going on. You can ask anybody I know. We've all been struggling. So, and I go back to work tomorrow night. It's kind of a guy's only option at this point, so. After finally locating a mature deer, Kaylin and Matthew made a decision to go in and get a better look at this deer. Not only did he look like he was a shooter buck, but he was bedded down in a great spot. One advantage that Kalen had was he was hunting in his hometown hills, so he knew every trail and every little crevice to help him get in closer on this buck. Keep going that fence. Just keep your eyes. After getting a closer look on this deer, Kalen came to the decision that this buck was worth putting a tag on.
Got to 68 yards on them. Watched this guy all morning with a bunch of other bucks. They all decided to head into cover and this guy stayed and he bedded in some buck brush. I didn't think we'd get to 68 yards. I was thinking maybe 100 or 150, but we got right in his kitchen and was probably sitting there for about a half hour before he got up. He started feeding away from us and he just looked good and it was just too good to pass up with this scenario. Nice sunny day with good buddies. I'm happy with them. On to Whitetails next. Been busy and tied up with mule deer and whitetail for Caleb and then mule deer for me. I was lucky enough to get one with my draw tag, but now I got the rest of the year to hopefully get a nice whitetail here up north. I want to put a blind back here and what this is, he's got a nice brushed in area over here so it's all open and what they do is they come off the field and then they follow the edge of this open area and it ends up putting them right here and then they go back into the timber. So. I'm really excited about this spot. I've really, I've seen some really good bucks actually funnel through here back in the day, and uh, it's just a nice little funnel for them to go bed for the day. Little did Galen know that winter was coming in like a lion with no signs of turning into a lamb. After the snow hit, it seemed like all the deer stopped moving. And it quickly had to change things around for Galen. So he called in the big guns, his dad, Les Columbus. They were deciding to go out and try to get a buck for Galen to finish off his 2021 season. After checking a couple of their honey holes, they came across a buck in the middle of a field that just did not seem to move, and they quickly understood why. Upon further inspection, they realized they had to take action. guys here he is you know he's not he's not the biggest in the world but there's a bit of a story behind this one came up today with my dad and you know we don't get to hunt a whole lot together anymore just due to him living in another province but uh, came up north here and I wouldn't know about this place you know if it wasn't for this guy so I, uh, I appreciate him for everything he's done and showing me when it comes to hunting and just enjoying nature for all it has and and uh, 
so this one goes beyond the inches for me but this deer when we found him you know there was something a little off you know normally he would have ran away kind of thing if we stayed there as long as we did and uh, he just stuck around so we went and talked to a local landowner and he gave us the green light to go on and stuff so we snuck in and dad happened to notice there was something wrong with his back end and that's why he wasn't moving so uh, we thought he was getting eaten at by coyotes but uh, so we we didn't mess around we went and put him down quick and it's not something you would have wanted to see kind of thing and uh, well, it's what? been a while I guess since we've been up here together too uh, I yeah. remember uh, bringing you up here as just a little guy and showing you some of the trails back here and the scenery and uh, you know, sitting up in a tree stand and calling deer in and you know it's memories that you can't uh, you know you never want to forget and uh, that's what it's all about is spending time with family and friends and you know enjoying the outdoors and appreciating uh, you know what do we have out here and uh, you know it's stuff like that that uh, is very uh, precious in life and that's what's important is we get to do this together and Enjoy every minute of it. So, you betcha. We are just relentless.